Joining me today on Dolphin Tales, we have Sable Lee. Sable is a 2016 JU softball alum and currently the Assistant Director of Student Athlete Development at Clemson University. Sable, thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Anything I can do for the Finn fam, always looking forward to it. Uh, that's great. Well, you know, I first um, actually got introduced to you um, via Twitter. It wasn't directly, but um, you were part of a web series through Clemson, um, Clemson Voices, and a lot of uh, the, you know, people in the athletic department, people at the university, at, at Jacksonville University, were sharing it, retweeting it. Uh, powerful series, so I certainly want to get into that um, at some point, but I guess we'll, we'll kind of start at, at your beginning with the university. And just talk about your path there. And we've, we've had a lot of people on really from all over the country who have come to the university to play, you know, their respective sports. So uh, let's start with, you know, your path to get to JU and playing softball. So why don't you just kind of give us the starting point of, you know, coming from the Oviedo area up to Jacksonville. So how did that all come about? Yes, so I'm proudly from Oviedo, Florida, which is right uh, about 10 minutes away from UCF, so in the, the Northeast Orlando area, and played softball growing up since I was seven years old, but I loved, actually my first love was basketball. I played basketball, softball, golf, and weightlifting in high school, so I just wanted to play sports. I wanted to be active. I didn't want there to be a downtime. Uh, but throughout my high school journey, I realized I really wanted to get serious, and that's when I fell in love with the Jacksonville campus. Um, obviously, the program was awesome. I loved the coaching staff that I committed to and just the direction of the athletic department, but most importantly, I loved the campus. It was right on the river, dolphins. Who doesn't want to go to a school where dolphins they're just casually swimming by every day and there's a beautiful sunset. You can see the Jacksonville Jaguars Stadium from center field where I was going to be playing. So um, I loved, I just loved the, the scenery and it wasn't too far away from home. It was far enough away, but close <laughs> enough to where I could go home. And I fell in love with uh, the program, but also everything around it. And when I got to Jacksonville, candidly speaking, uh, from the time that I committed to the time that I graduated, there was turnover within the coaching staff turnover, some turnover with an athletic department and even turnover with presidency. But that just speaks to the to the great pieces of Jacksonville University where in the midst of turnover and, and inevitable change, right, in college athletics, I still stayed and I was in love with the school academically. There was a bunch of clubs and things to be involved in. So I was just really happy. I made the right choice. Um, it wasn't perfect. It wasn't always smooth. There are things that um, I talk about even in the Voices series that I experienced, but uh, just holistically, I fell in love with Jacksonville, and I think it was 2010, and um, I'm still in love with it now. I still go back to my little my little uh, place by the river and watch the dolphins and the sunset. So that's uh, the short version of my journey to Jacksonville. That's awesome. Yeah, I, I know, you know, when I was coming out of high school, um, I didn't play all the sports. Um, I kind of started focusing on baseball after my sophomore year and realized, you know, I was playing football and I wasn't a big guy. So I knew that wasn't going to happen. So play baseball and, and hopefully, you know, kind of put all my cards there. Um, and honestly, I didn't really know much about Jacksonville as a city or Jacksonville University. And the Jags had started as an NFL team a few years before. Um, you know, and honestly, I heard about it through a different university's baseball camp. It was one of the JU assistant coaches was coaching me there and he started talking about JU and I looked it up and ended up coming to a baseball camp and, and decided to come play there. Um, so when you first got to campus, you know, what was the, the one thing that really stood out to you? Because obviously coming from Orlando, you know, another big city, a bigger city in some respects. Um, you know, having UCF right there and other well-known D1 schools, what was the one thing that really stood out to you when you first got to campus? Yeah, that's such a great question. The first thing that comes to my mind is just community. It was, it's a small school. I, the first probably two months I realized I didn't see too many different people walking to and from class. You always saw that one person and that little head nod, don't know anything about them, but you just start seeing the same people. And then as you're seeing the same people, you're looking up and you're looking around and it's beautiful. I mean, you know, just walking around campus, 
it's so pretty on that sunny day. You're in Florida, you're right by the beach, and you're like, oh man, I can't, <laughs> I can't complain. Even if I just had a terrible BP session, like we, <laughs> we won't talk about that. I'm still walking to class and it's beautiful. It's not too far of a walk to and from. You know, I think that's what stuck out to me is had some big school offers, of course, came from UCF, which is one of the largest um, schools in the nation. That's where I grew up around going to those games, but just fell in love with the community and small school aspect of it. I really realized I love that about Jacksonville. That's awesome. So you, you mentioned you played center field. Um, like I told you when we first spoke, I was on the other side. I like throwing at people, not being thrown at you. You like it the other way, which is Absolutely. good. Um, <laughs> you know, Throughout your time there at the university playing softball, in, in a lot of these interviews, when we talk to people that went through the athletic department, um, obviously we've talked to a lot of people that played different sports on different teams. Um, th there's a few recurring themes that we're starting to see. And one of those is, is that family, um, the family aspect, but not only inside of your specific sport, but the athletic department as a whole. And you started talking about that a little bit of just seeing the same people I think that really speaks to the university overall. But what were some of the things that you saw as, you know, the baseball team would go to softball games or softball would go to baseball games or soccer or whatever it was? I mean, tell me a little bit about that family atmosphere, both inside of softball, but the athletic department overall. Yes. Well, I'll start with softball. Those My teammates are my sisters for life. Um, even the – I'll shout out class of 2016 – Softball, my girls, we go on a trip every single year. Uh, every year we're going somewhere. I think in 2018, we went to Dallas and then one of us got married, not me, but one of, one of us got married within our group. We were, went to her wedding and every single year we tried to do something. It goes beyond even the four years of eligibility of the family piece. Um, and we're, we're really, really close. Um, and we went through a lot as a class, but we were a family and just really experienced the beauty of Jacksonville together. As for the athletic department and the school as a whole, as a family, I mean, I, I'm telling you right now, I would not have the job prior to Clemson nor the job at Clemson if it weren't for relationships that I built or that I was able to build and fortunate to, to meet certain people and build authentic and genuine relationships at Jacksonville. Teammates, um, former st or fellow student athletes, and also professionals within the athletic department, I would not be here without that. And I don't think I would have got that if I would have went to a bigger school or the family aspect about Jacksonville um, wasn't built the way it was. So I, I, I love what I get to do at Clemson. I love where I've been. I, Texas Tech gave me a really cool opportunity, but I can't, I can't um, accept any of those things without really paying homage to the relationships that I built and the family that I have at Jacksonville. Um, just being able to get involved in a lot of different things, whether it was the sport business club or interning in the athletic department. On Tuesdays, I was with Alex Ricker Gilbert, and on Thursdays, I was with compliance or Lauren Sevis or um, formerly an employee there, Lamar Pottinger, whatever it was, I was I was taken in and developed holistically by the school. So um, I give I give a lot of credit to the family atmosphere at, at JU. Jack. That's awesome. <laughs> you uh, you mentioned a little bit about the um, the turnover and the change and, and really having to be adaptable to what was happening you know, between the, the program, the athletic department, different presidents. And you'd also said that your major actually went through a lot of change while you were there. Tell me a little bit about the, the academic side of things while you were there. Um, Pat, I think I may have had six to seven core substitution forms, I think. Um, but it was, <laughs> it turned out to be a blessing in disguise for me. So my freshman and sophomore year, I was a sport management major. In between my sophomore and junior year, they discontinued that major and moved it to the Davis College of Business. So I was able to do like a hybrid version of my major, do some sport business classes while also still staying in the more sociology or human sciences aspect of it. So was able to customize a little <laughs> bit. It was, it was challenging and frustrating to get some things signed, but looking back at it now, I was able to really be intentional about what I wanted to do. I took a really high level psychology class, which I don't think I would have been able to take if I stayed in the Davis College of Business. So try to be positive. It was frustrating at times, but 
Um, I think now, especially literally right now and today during COVID and all of the heightened uncertainty and unknown um, change is something that was a reality for myself and people who were there during, during the time that I was. So I, I would say it's, again, looking back at it, it's a blessing in disguise because uh, there was a lot of turnover. There was a lot of change at some point, um, whether it was on the field, athletic department or academically. Um, but again, I, I think that's what makes my experience unique because I'm able to utilize, know how to utilize some resources because at one point we didn't necessarily have as much as some others and just shout out to the, the new leadership or the leadership and them being able to grow and, and really put some strategy with resources. And I'm so happy that the current student athletes get to have what they have now. Um, but I was able to see that kind of evolve. So I'm very appreciative that student athletes have it now, but at, at some point during my career, we didn't have necessarily what the current student athletes have either. So just being able to learn how to utilize our resources, but also learn how to thrive in the midst of change are, are a couple of skills that I, I'm blessed to, to have had because of my time at, at Jacksonville. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you, you hit it right, right on the head as far as you know, being able to kind of roll with change right now with everything going on economically, socially, politically. I mean, it's, you know, it, it seems like the, the biggest mess maybe we've all lived through. Um, and Scott and I were talking right before we came on, you know, just today getting my kids who are eight, six and three ready for school, you know, and, and just the, the pick up and drop offs and the, the, you know, hand washing and face masks and all that. What are some of the things that you're dealing with right now with the student athletes in your role to, to help them navigate everything, um, you know, to get ready to stay positive. I mean, I saw Alex, who you had mentioned, um, you know, put out something on Twitter to all the student athletes about just staying off social media right now yep. because there's so much misinformation. I think as a general statement, I would say <laughs> that was probably one of the best things he said because not even just with getting back to school, you know, right now there's just so much information going on. So what are some of the things that you're doing in your role at Clemson uh, to help the student athletes? Yeah. Well, first of all, I loved, I retweeted that right away. Um, shout out to ARG. Definitely agree. There's so much information, um, opinion-based tweets, um, a lot of opinions out there that aren't informed. Um, the fact of the matter is we don't know things for sure until people who are in decision making decisions make a decision. And I have a lot of grace and respect for people in those, dis in, in those seats but also just given our student athletes, they are very understandably confused, anxious. Um, some of them might be feeling a sense of, unmo you know, not being motivated because they've been working out voluntarily or they've been working out in their workouts, practicing and in the back of their head that they have in their mind, okay, is this even gonna happen? And when we start, are we gonna have to stop? All of this stuff, I have not been a student athlete in the midst of COVID. I have not been a student athlete in the midst of heightened racial events that also have a layer of hope. I've been a student athlete with heightened racial events where I didn't feel any type of hope, but I have not been in their shoes. So to answer your question, a lot of the things that we're doing is listening, checking in on them. What do you need? What does programming look like for you in the fall? What is too much? What's not enough? Some sports, it's different. Spring sports are saying, we, are, we need things to put on our calendar. We want things to look forward to. Um, we miss seeing other student athletes. We haven't been able to see each other. We miss you all. We want to, what are we going to do about jobs? How do I interview virtually? I mean, you could just go on and go on. Fall sports might be a little bit different. They're like, we have no idea. Class, we don't know when that's going to be. What do travel letters even look like? What is going on? So it's just really sitting down and listening and then trying your best to make an informed decision. But what a good decision last week for us in our situation might not be a good decision this week because of things that are going on. So it's just sitting down, listening, being flexible, having grace for others, having grace for ourselves. Um, no one knows what the perfect answer is. The student athletes don't either. But just sitting down and listening. And I think on the, on the racial standpoint, it has been more, more important than ever, than ever to sit and listen and to sit and empathize and to sit and support 
And also know that if we're asking how to support student athletes, if they've never seen support, it's unrealistic to, for them to give us an answer. So we have to do our part in really being creative, innovative, and also collaborating with people to, uh, to, to bridge resources to them, to show them what support that they have at their fingertips. So it's been a lot, but it's been a lot of sitting down, listening, really figuring things out. Some things work, some things haven't, but um, the one thing that we have to control is showing up even in the midst of we're not, un we don't know what the outcome's gonna be, but we have to show up for them right now. So um, yeah, it's a, that's a long-winded answer, but it's, great. It, this summer has very, been very long-winded appropriately. So <laughs> it, it's, <laughs> it's been a lot, but um, I'm really, really, really happy that um, we are able to be in a position to be there for them and to listen and to provide a safe space. So uh, that's fantastic. And like you said, I mean, no one has lived through this mix of everything going on, you know, and so for you to have come from the playing side of things to go through and I know you coach for a bit and now you're you're in that support role for the student athletes, you know, at least you've got both sides of the coin where you can really, like you said, empathize with them. You've been through some of these situations, not exactly this mix, um, but what a great resource to to have um, across the board, not just at Clemson, not just at JU, but you know, for student athletes to have that support. Um, and one of the biggest things that you mentioned there is hope. You know, hope that we're going to get through COVID. Hope that the the racial issues that are going on right now, like you said, if people can empathize with each other and listen and have good dialogue, then maybe change can continue to to progress along. So um, I mentioned at the start of this, we had talked a little bit about Clemson Voices and some of the things that you just brought up. Um, if you want, just to maybe take a few additional minutes on that. Um, talk about the web series that y'all are doing and maybe just a few more highlights that, that we could take from that session that you did. Yeah, I would love to. And I have to give a really special shout out to our creative services team at Clemson because it's their initiative. They reached out to myself and my counterpart, Anthony Hines, and asked, hey, is this something that would be great for you all to be a part of? Do you think staff, faculty, and student athletes would want to do it? And we said, absolutely, we're in, we spread the word, and it just it was a trickle-down effect, and it's their, it was just their way of providing a call to action to a lot of the stuff and the heightened emotions and events around racial and social injustice in June. So shout out to them. And um, it was very interesting doing the voices uh, campaign in the video because when I was doing it, it wasn't scripted. They were just asking questions. It was a conversation. And as I was speaking, I was like, wow, I, I don't think I've really talked about this with anyone or this this open or this public, maybe in a small group or in, our, in my dorm room with another student athlete of color on another team, or maybe it was one of my teammates, but I had never talked to a camera and with it knowing it was going to be on this wide national platform mm -hmm. and afterwards i felt a really really huge sense of relief it was almost therapeutic it was um it was weird i had never processed some of the things and there were things that i said that they edited out and just to fit the time and mm -hmm. things like that but um it was it was v very unexpected unexpectedly therapeutic so but I, I, I mentioned in the video, and this is something that I think is really important, is representation matters. It really does. I, when I was a student athlete at Jacksonville, I was the only black softball player my freshman year and my senior year. And throughout my four years, um, I had teammates who did not, I'd never had a, another student athlete of, or another teammate of color all throughout four years. It was either someone came in, they transferred out or, they came in, you know, here, I think sophomore and junior year, Shania Graves was a consistent teammate of mine. Shout out to Shania. That's my girl. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so I didn't have a consistent teammate. And um, it was really, really important for me to have representation. Lauren Sevis and Lamar Pottinger were working in the athletic department. They were academic advisors, SAC advisor, and they did student athlete development um, and I saw them and I would not, I don't think that I would have, would have been able to see myself in their positions 
and look up to them like I do even to this day if they weren't there. I saw them and they developed me, they took me in and all that, but the, what was really important, what really scratched the surface and what got me under below the waterline of developing into student athlete development was seeing them. And now that I'm in the position, that's part of my why. And not just someone seeing me as um, a black administrator, but I'm a female administrator. I'm a former student athlete. I have a little bit of a coaching background, right? There's so many different identities that I have, but I represent something. And that's really, really important to me because I have no idea who's seeing me like I saw them. And that is really important. Um, in the game of softball growing up, I, I saw there was individuals, absolutely, but I didn't have a lot of examples. Um, growing up, getting recruited, I was a lot of time the only black girl out there. And if there was another black girl, it was kind of like, oh, hey, what's going on? Let's talk. About, yeah, sis, we got to talk after the game because <laughs> hello, right? That's real. I'm being, I'm keeping it right? real, but that that feeling is really important especially when we're developing student athletes from different walks of life. Um, I think it's very important to have international uh, administrators who can relate to our international student athletes, people of color, men, women, of all different backgrounds, LGBTQ+, all of that, it's very, very important. So I know my role in that, and I thought it was really cool that the Creative, Service, Creative Solutions team at Clemson gave myself and other faculty members a platform to voice that. So um, really appreciative for that opportunity. And of course, appreciative for those at JU that supported uh, that series for sure. Wow, that's, that's fantastic. Um, I know we got to wrap it up. I know you got somewhere else to be. You're a very busy person uh, with the school getting back in and everything. So I'll, I'll hit you with one last question. Um, what is, you know, one uh, podcast appropriate, your best story from your time playing at JU? Oh, right, <laughs> right off on the, the spot. <laughs> oh, I got it already. Senior year, um, UNF, swept UNF at home, uh, went 3-0, and sent them back down, did that back down the interstate. Um, they came on our turf, and I'm I'm getting hyped thinking about it already. But we had not um, we had not beat them uh, up until that point. So our senior class that okay. was our first time or our last chance to to lay it on them, um, and we did three times in a row over a weekend, and um, it was one of my favorite moments of all time. It was awesome. So thank you for teeing that up. Uh, that was a great alley oop. Um, that and was I unscripted. <laughs> unscripted, but you got me hype. You got me hype. Um, we added some points to that River City Rumble. So, um, but I can remember specifically our coach surprised us as we were running out on the field, run this town by Jay Z featuring Beyonce played, and I was yep. all. I don't even think I. Re I don't think I was paying attention the first pitch in center field. I think I was like still dancing <laughs> or something. But I was so. So hype, um, that just set the, the tone for the rest of the weekend. It was a very competitive weekend, very competitive series, which made it, I think one game we won like 16 to 15. I don't know what was going on with our defense, but we won't talk about that, but we won. Um, <laughs> but that was probably my favorite moment at Jacksonville to go out with a sweep against our, our in-town rival. So thanks, Pat. Appreciate it. There you that. go. There you go. <laughs> Wafted up to softball, as they say. So. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So, uh, and the well, last thing, yeah, the, yeah, I'm yeah. sorry, Pat, the last thing I'll say too is I'm just really happy that our student athletes all around the world, I think we're, we're seeing right now that they have, they have power in their voice, they have a platform, their voice is very important. I don't think that I felt as a student athlete when I was a student athlete that my voice necessarily, I don't think I realized how important um, my voice was and the things that were going on around me and how much I, uh, leadership influence I had as a student athlete. I was involved in SAC and some things, but just to all the student athletes out there, your voice matters, your experience matters, and you know I would not and none of us would have a job without them. So I'm just really happy to see just the activism that's going on, the education, and just the leadership and social awareness that our student athletes have. So. Really appreciate the work that Jacksonville's doing and Alex Ricker Gilbert and his leadership, of course. But these student athletes are really stepping it up, and I'm, I'm proud to see that.
Say, well, thank you so much for coming on. We'll have to get you back when uh, next time you're in Jacksonville. We'll, we'll do this live when we're back on campus when everyone's back. So thank you so much for being on the show today. Thank you, Pat and Scott. Appreciate you.